quindi stavo dicendo che ci sono dei problemi personal, 
the poetry, a little bit the touch from those underlying things that I think are, are still there, only filter through a different, different experience. And uh, I think there is no other mean than the artistic world to be able to express freely those thinking through poetry, through art, through sculpting. I continue to work on a different kind of media. Uh, in, in this show tonight, that's called Respiro, that's actually the, the title of the sculpture. I'm going to illustrate a little bit more later. It's collecting the work of the last couple of years. There are series of smaller works, in acrylics, oils, Right also to, I, I like the idea of working in series, working in how the figure transforms from one place to the other, and how the poetry can still remain combined with the figure, with the visual work. Poetry still continues to be central to my, to my research. I've been translating the classics for so many years, it's part of what I am, what I do. It needs to be there with, with the visual aspect, and I think they merge perfectly, and there is nothing more expressing than the human form. So what else to use to express what is in the poetry? And if you can, uh, would you like me, I, I would like to, to go around and read a few of the poems that give a little bit of a, you know, fuller, you know, idea of what is behind each single piece that, as I was mentioning, has his own poetry, his own ideas, and tries to visualize it through the, the media, but the idea is very well defined behind. So uh, I would like to read and maybe explain some of the works. Not always easy to find the book, but uh, I will go, why don't we go around seeing, you know, the, the, the circulars, you know, the, the exhibition. This is actually Suburis, Under the Birth Worlds, and the colors try to reflect what is in the poetry that talks about birth worlds, sand, and also how strong a man can be in front of them. Uh, and this is more serious, and the poetry says something along these lines. Under the birth worlds, the sand remains, purified. I recite the monologue of the essence and of the continuous relapse of mortal law. Tears and words, the art of power, quiet, is only a god can be. This other piece is called the solitudine. Uh, completely different feeling, of course, the colors and the blue that are mentioned in the poetry, like having a moon reflecting on, uh, on the two lovers. Uh, strangely enough, uh, are combined on a work that's called the solitudine. So uh, about loneliness, and it's exploring how two human beings can be very close also physically, but still maintain their own individuality, and that dualism continue to be to be alive, like it is here in this poem that says, "Your lips talk about the emptiness that surrounds me, about solitude. Your kisses cast the blue shadow of the moon on my mouth, and my love itself interpenetrate. I am in your womb." The amber beginning to die. We turn our eyes on a fading world. I would like you to remain with me. I'm going to go on the other side, so excuse me. I would like to talk a little bit about these two pieces. Unfortunately, they're not easy to see from that side, but uh, it's called Paris. It's a diptych. There are two pieces that, uh, that uh, try to reflect uh, the landscape of darkness and features that are very much related to, to a lagoon. And the poem says, lagoon, intermediate landscape, scraping down edge of features by darkness, hides the stair pressing its paleness. Impalpable object of touch, nothing from being admits belonging. I am so impure. Can we go around the corner here? <coughs> this one, it's, uh, this pill is called Bombix Byzanti, and it's basically Silk of Byzantium. Uh, it's a completely different point than the others. It's really about the vision of beauty, of purity. And it says, I've listened to your soft step, your rhythmic breathing in the dance. I follow your hand 
sliding through your hair of amber silk of Byzantium. I want to taste your beauty, pure. I want to keep your tears in the palm of my hand, sweetest token of your mortal love. Thank you. This is a diptych. Actually, probably these are the oldest work and part of this collection. And one is called Hate, and the other is called So. Hate says something like that. These are extremely short epigrams. Faces empty of names, spread pale within the shadow of glasses. The other, So, says, like a hand, in autumn, so in eyes of the child, after death, continues to live. with natural pigments. I use copper, bronze, iron that oxidizes in such an unbelievable different shade of red and dark browns. And the poetry is, is about purely love. And it says, I love your hair of violet, your pure face, your skin, illuminated by the faint fingers of the moon. I adore your lovable smile. Once you tell me of the pleasures of your exquisite existence, the lyricism of your verse moves in me a sentiment with no reservations, unrestrainable. Um, and then I go back on the other side for the last two pieces I would like to talk about. Now please stay. <laughs> Difficult to handle the microphone, the book, and everything, but we try our best. So this is a diptych, it's called Cuore Graves, Oppressive Hours. It's about trying to bring into the contortion of, of the human form what the poetry expresses like this innate unquietness and the, the contortion you can have also internally uh, in your soul in, in a way that says Oppressive Hours of a night beaten by the wind of insomnia amongst the naked vineyards contorted in fields of olive of silver. My limbs, words, are reflected on your eyes with the soft flashes. Your tumid lips desire the memory of my body, pallid. Inside of you, inside your womb, seducing tongue, our remembrance is shaped by a pale light. And that leads me to the last piece. actually is the one that gives a little bit of meaning to, to the exhibition. It's Respiro, is the uh, recent sculpture. I'm working on a new series of sculptures. Still, the poetry, as you can see, it's very visible, more and more visible in all, all of my work. In the sculpting, still remains central. It's like the structure around which the, the torso is, you know, is evolving. And uh, poetry is about pure freedom. And I like to see also that freedom reflecting in a different way through the light of the human form and taking so many different perceptions, so different declinations, so different views. And it's also complemented by a music piece, so that's why we have a player uh, that is a soundtrack. So I work with, on, on all the sculptures, and I'm working with so many different composers around the world. So this is with Alex Cremonesi. Uh, it's, uh, it's based in Milan. And uh, I simply read the poetry, so there is spoken word and music. That's quite alternative, quite modern, but we wanted to see the contrast between a classically inspired sculpture and the modern sound. And I'm working with classical uh, composers with a wide range of musicians around the world to bring up this new series of work. And let's see how it evolves, yeah? how, how it will go. So I invite you also later to listen to the piece if you want. But the poetry that's part of the sculpture is called Respiro, that means I breathe. And it says, I breathe, purple flower in my hand. Touch me with leaves most of you. Sprinkle me with, me, sprinkle me with kisses. Sensation of imminent rain outlines a pose in the sight of resistance. Free, 
the void of any decadence, in time to work to time, as an imperfect lover, I believe. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you again for, for you for, for coming tonight. It's a great pleasure. And I look forward to seeing you around, and if you have questions, am I by word? Sure. What's the name of the music? What's the name of the music? The name of the music is the Respiro. Oh, it's the same title. So basically, I'm reading myself yeah. the poetry, spoken word, and complemented with contemporary music to see how it blends together. And it can give a full experience in that way. Thank you. Thank you again. And I look forward to discussing with each one of you later tonight. And just on a technical uh, point the exit when you decide to leave after eight, after whatever is time you want to leave, hopefully the latest. Uh, the exit is going to be here. So you go at the end of this hall, you will see an exit on the right, so you don't have to go all the way back and you will be in the left of the second street. Thank you. Pleasure.